Whew, well, it's about time, really, isn't it? Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Guild Wars 2. Uh, my original plans were to start doing this a lot earlier than I actually have ended up doing it. It's been about a month since the launch of the game. I guess I've just kind of taken this month to really get to grips with a lot of what's going on, so I know that when I do this Let's Play, I've actually got some decent stuff to talk to you guys about and some real information to share. I still don't know everything about every character's personal story uh, and the goal with this Let's Play is going to be to see pretty much everything the personal story has to offer and a lot of what the game has. Uh, so buckle in, there will be a lot here. Um, it's been about a month, as I say, since the game's come out and I feel like at this point most of us that have been really excited about the game have had a chance to get in, have had a chance to play at least one character to level 80 and are now maybe sat there twiddling our thumbs and thinking what do we do now? Um, and if you are in that situation, uh, hopefully you'll find this interesting at least to be able to go through and see what some of the other personal stories look like and I will say one thing going into this, I'm not going to ramble for ages before we actually get into the game, I will say one thing though, Guild Wars 2 is just like Guild was one in that it's very easy to miss a lot of the stuff that's going on there is a lot of dialogue that happens throughout the game that you can just miss so so easily so uh, this is kind of my goal here I'm gonna show you guys all the stuff you've probably missed as you've been playing through just as I did with Guild Wars 1 we're gonna have a bit of a focus on the story uh, and hopefully rally behind what again is quite a cool story but it's just delivered really really badly in the game so uh, we'll see what happens uh, I hope you enjoy this this has been a long time coming it almost feels weird saying this but um yeah welcome to let's play guild wars 2 uh we're going to be starting off with two characters actually two characters in tandem but for the first video at the very least we're going to be playing a human generic i know if you have played a human don't worry the other one we're going to be doing is a char which we'll be starting on next uh episode also i'm going to be talking to you guys i know a lot of you watching probably know a fair bit about guild wars as it is but i'm going to go back to the basics and we're just going to build everything from the ground up just in case people are watching this who might not know too much about the game and might like to decide whether they're going to get it off of this kind of stuff so guild wars 2 this is character creation, first of all. I'm not going to spend too long on it. Uh, it offers five playable races for us, okay? We've got humans. You're probably familiar with what a human is. Uh, we've got the Char. We've got the Norn, Asura, and Silvari. I'll explain all the races as we get to them. Human, though, uh, we'll just read the little description here. Humans are humans. Uh, humans have lost their homeland, their security, and their former glory. Even their gods have withdrawn, and yet the human spirit remains unshaken. These brave defenders of Kryta continue to fight with every ounce of their strength. Kryta is the nation that the, the final nation really that the humans live in in Guild Wars 2 and that's the main areas you'll be playing in should you choose this race uh, and that's what we're going to see at least for this first episode. I'm gonna, I'm not going to play a male this time, some of my characters are going to be males but I'm actually going to go with a female because we did a big Guild Wars 1 let's play and I picked all males every single time so let's start off with a female this time um, but I think I, I have a strong feeling the majority of my characters will be male but yeah let's go with a female. Um, and also, uh, I'm going to go... So, Guild Wars 2 has eight professions. Let's just explain this straight away. Um, some of them are spellcasters. Some of them are heavy armor wearers. Some of them are more stealthy, medium armor wearers, and so forth. Uh, we'll get a good look at a range of these professions. But I think for this character, at least, we're going to be a ranger. Because um, I love having pets and stuff, especially in these videos. And you guys will get a chance to name any pets I have. But only rangers actually get that. And I haven't really played much of a ranger just on my own yet. So, it should be a fun experience picking this. Uh, so yeah, rangers are proficient with the bow. They rely on a keen eye, a steady hand, and the power of nature to slay their targets. Their loyal pets, which rangers tame and train, distract enemies while the rangers strike safely from a distance. Rangers wear medium armor. There are three classes of armor in the game, which I'll get into later. Um, then we basically get how does your character look. This is kind of just the default style, I suppose. There's a lot of options here. I'm not the kind of player that could spend hours and hours and hours looking at this kind of stuff, so I'm just going to quickly cut it into I've made a character I think looks reasonably okay uh, and I'll catch up with you guys in a second. Here's the thing, I would just go with defaults except there's probably a million rangers that look like this. Alright, that'll do. I haven't really spent that long on it. Um, so one big section of customising the way your character looks here is die. There is a very extensive die system in Guild Wars 2 which we'll have a look at. It's actually really fun to play with. Um, you get basically three different areas of every section of your armour that you can die. Uh, and it's really, really extensive. You can pick, therefore, as you create your character, a specific setup going into the game. But this can always be changed later. So don't worry too much about that if you're playing alongside me. Um, really, you can go back and change these things as you go forward. 
That was a big thing a lot of people did, by the way, with my Guild Wars 1 Let's Play. They kind of went through the game alongside my characters. Might be fun to do with this. It depends how it really pans out uh, for Guild Wars 2, since they are very different games. Anyway, so uh, once we've done all of that stuff, uh, you get into a section of the character creator that deals a lot with more personal stuff to you. Um, the first question you get is dependent on which profession you chose. So since I said I was a ranger, I get a question about what pet I start off the game with. Uh, so my pet, Blank, fights at my side and guards my back. You get a choice as a human. Um, the choices do change, but you get a choice as a human for a bear. Uh, my bear and I fight as a single unit, and he takes the slightest gesture to give a command, and then we're tearing through our enemies. You get the choice of a stalker. My stalker is a dear friend. It's quiet, still, and as quick as an arrow from a bow. Its intelligence shows in its eyes. Or a drake. I tamed my drake when it was a hatchling. Now it follows me everywhere. It's proven itself as a relentless and powerful friend. I do like the drake. Drakes in Guild Wars 1, you got to see some enemies with the drakes, uh, and it was always so cool to see, and I really wanted it, but I'm going to go with a stalker, at least for now. Rangers can have multiple pets in this game, though. So, hey, maybe eventually we'll get a drake. Uh, but I want to start off with a stalker, which, as I say, um, we can name when we get in-game. And I'm going to throw that out there to you guys to do. I don't know what I really want to name it. So, uh, leave a comment on this video of whatever name you think the stalker could be. And that will be the name of our pet throughout the Let's Play. So... Yeah, do consider that. So next we get another question about what kind of personality we have. Trouble may follow me, but I use my blank to overcome it. There are three kind of generic areas you can go into. You can be very charming, you can speak with dignity, or you can be quite ferocious. Um, we're going to have this first character as Dignity. I'm dignified even when up to my ears in mud is what makes people respect me. A serious, thoughtful demeanour is the route to success. Kind of generic, I'll give you that, but this character, I just think going with Dignity really suits it, considering the, the choices we're about to make. Uh, because now we get into even more specific stuff about our past. This is quite cool. You don't really see this in a lot of other MMOs. Um, you can say where you were raised. Were you raised in the streets by common folk or among the nobility? This will actually change the story going forward into the game, as you're probably aware. Among the nobility is probably my favorite seriously out of all of the human storylines among the nobility is, is a pretty great one so I grew up among the nobles including my friend Lord Farron who can trace their ancestry back to ancient kings I received an excellent education am well versed in courtly graces and understand the responsibility that comes with privilege we'll talk about these ancient kings going forward a little bit um, because there's some interesting story to do with those that you might not have caught out in the game so yeah uh, we're, we are among the nobility um, and now we even get to choose what one of our biggest regrets is. This also changes the personal story. Uh, we can say that we've never searched for our true parents, that we never recovered our sister's body, or that we passed up an opportunity to perform in the circus. Uh, I've, I know what all these stories are. My favourite is, though there is some merit to this one in the circus, my favourite is true parents. This, this is just a fantastic story here, uh, which I'm going to love showing you guys. When I was an infant, I was abandoned at an orphanage. A kind couple adopted me and became my family. However, I've always wondered about my birth parents. So, Kind of a weird mix, actually, because we're born in the nobility, but also an orphanage. That's kind of an odd one. But still, this is uh, hopefully going to provide quite a cool story for us. So... Now we get our final choice, really, um, for the personal story. And this is a weird one. Every race has got a kind of a, a choice here that they get to make that doesn't really have much impact on anything. Um, and so for us as a human, we get to say, everyone said I was blessed by blank when I was young. And we get to pick one of the human gods. These had a big role to play in Guild Wars 1. But for Guild Wars 2, they've kind of stepped back an awful lot more than they had in the first game. And it turns out in the personal story, there's very, it's so minor. I will show you what changes by picking these. But it's, it's barely anything. I just think in expansions this will probably come forward a little bit more but we get to say which god we were blessed by as a ranger it used to be in guild wars 1 that whatever profession you chose as human kind of meant you were aligned to one god more than any other um, and for rangers that was melandru this was the goddess of nature earth and growth she can be found in every harvest and every flower she smiles upon those like me who have an affinity with animals i'm a follower of melandru so uh, let's be generic let's go with melandru for the record my favorite god is lissa uh, there's interesting stuff about all of them this is the one of war and fire, Balthazar. Uh, we'll see a lot of their priests and stuff in some of the early human stuff, so don't worry if you don't know too much about these guys at this point. But yeah, Melandry, so this is our goddess. And finally, we get to pick our name. This is our biography as it stands. Melandry, the goddess of nature, blessed me when I was young. Though trouble may follow me, I overcome it with dignity. I grew up among the nobility, and I value my honour. I've made something of myself, and the only thing I regret is that I never searched for my true parents. I'm a ranger, and I have a stalker that fights on my side and guards my back. This is is my story. That's kind of a tagline that everyone gets. This is my story. Uh, and the name. Uh, the name, the name, the name. Uh, we are going to be called, okay, as soon as I can type properly because the keyboard's going nuts here. No, not M. Not M. N. There we go. Natalie. P 
Pine Cove. There we go. Uh, if you were a fan of my Guild Wars 1 stuff, you might recognise that naming convention. It's back. Yes, guys, it's back. I'm not good at naming my characters. So there we go. We've made our character. Now let's get in game and witness the opening cutscene. Of which, sadly, there aren't too many cutscenes in this game. But so, yeah, enjoy this one while it lasts. The human race once ruled Tyria. Now, we struggle to hold our ground. We've been defeated, driven back, and broken. But we will not surrender. So many nations have fallen. Only Krita still stands. Our faith is strong, despite the silence of the Six Gods. With courage, we'll make our stand in Divinity's reach. The city is my home. I was born into luxury, a noble of Divinity's reach and privilege comes with responsibility. I protect the commoners under my care. They believe in me. I'm grateful for their trust, and I will not let them down. Today, I plan to venture beyond the gates of the city and see the world for myself. But when I arrived in Shamor, I found the town under siege by centaurs. Innocent villagers are in danger. Someone has to help. I will show the people that we can triumph, that there is still hope. This is my story. Yes, this is your story. Everyone is going to say it's their story, it's their story, so get used to that line. Uh, but yeah, so we're a human. Um, we're going to load into kind of a tutorial section here. There's a lot there, one thing I would say straight away. Um, they very much give the impression that the humans are on their last legs. They kind of take the role that a lot of elves in other fantasy games take, and that they're like the more aged race that's on about on the, like, the brink of being destroyed. Uh, the funny thing with humans, though, in, in this universe that I would just say straight away is... On this continent we're going to be playing in the game on at launch, uh, yeah, there aren't many humans left, not compared to what there originally were, but you will hear that there are other places in the world, other continents, that there, it, there's certainly in one of them, there seem to be tons of humans still there that could be doing very well, so always remember that. We're on our last legs here, but there could be a hell of a lot of other successful humans elsewhere in the world. Anyway, this is Guild Wars 2. We're in a place called Shamor. This is a, a small village, um, and this is the tutorial zone. It's got an awful lot of effects and stuff going off that actually, uh, don't be too worried when you first get in game. My FPS is quite low as it sounds, but really it, it won't be too bad for the rest of the game. Um, you can speak to this guy ahead of us called Corporal Byrne. And this is going to be really weird playing this game because there's an awful lot of voice acting, so I don't actually have to voice act myself half the time. Here's our stalker. He's pretty cute. I quite like him. Uh, as I say, no idea what his name is, so you guys can name him. Uh, basically, we, we have our goals. Our goals are always up in the top right-hand corner, so get used to that. These are our skills, this is our health, uh, it will become familiar to you as you go through. Um, but our first uh, task here is to go to the inn. You don't have to do that straight away, though. You can walk around this area and kill centaurs. There are a couple of reasons to do this, really. Um, and in addition to killing the centaurs near here, you can see some other players there that were fighting those. You can speak to these villagers who, say, who scream, You have to help me! And you can say, Go to the inn, you'll be safe there. And they run off and say thanks. Um, might seem a bit weird and a bit pointless. They will go all the way over to the inn where we're supposed to be going. Um, it's a little bit weird actually. In During the game's development, originally you had to speak to three of these guys. There's so much blood doing to protect us. There used to be three of these guys that you had to do, uh, like send to the inn, actually help people and be a proper hero I guess, before you went to the inn for yourselves. But um, actually, at the launch of the game, that changed completely, um, and it was no longer required. You just instead got something called Karma, which is kind of like gold for this game. I'll talk about that more later. There's so much to say. I don't know where to begin. Um, but basically, you used to get essentially gold for sending these people to the inn. Uh, but then somehow, uh, since then, uh, there was a recent patch. People found a way to farm it. It's only like two gold. It's barely anything. Two Karma. Um, but people found a way to farm it because there's been a patch that's completely removed that from the game. So now it really is kind of this very pointless mechanic where you can just say, go to the inn and you can help these people. 
Uh, they'll run there and then eventually someone will respawn to replace them. Very weird. None of the other starting stories with the other races actually offer you to do this. Uh, so yeah, um, there are limitations of the things you can do here. This is essentially an instance that will get kicked out of eventually. Uh, you can't level too high here right at the start of the game before you leave that instance. Uh, but there is one other reason I suppose you could stay. I mean, people were staying clearly to farm karma at some point, I guess. Uh, the other reason you might want to stay is killing the centaurs, even though they'll stop giving you experience after a while. They will... Um, they do have quite a high rate of dropping these things called tiny saddlebags, which give you certain items that uh, can be useful in the early game. There you go, I just got one right there, tiny supply bags. So you can double click these and you'll get other items like butter. Butter is quite sought after at the moment anyway in the game. So yeah, I, I guess there's a reason to stick about here, but you won't really, don't expect to level up or anything. Um, and really, in my, my advice would just be to go to the inn, as it tells you to. Uh, so here's the inn itself. Yay, you can actually go indoors in Guild Wars 2, the first game you couldn't go indoors. Um, you can speak to a lot of people around here. Not too much interesting dialogue to be had right at the start, I must admit. Most of these people, if you ever see a rule of thumb in this game, if you ever see someone with like a generic name like a rescued villager, they don't really have any dialogue for you. But you might see certain named NPCs, and in particular, if you see your cursor turn into a speech bubble, is there a centaur in the inn? Go away. If you see it turn into uh, like a speech bubble, as you can see over this person here, Sergeant Walters, that means they've got a little bit of extra dialogue for you, so you might want to do that. In fact, I remember these people having a lot more to say last time I was here, but apparently they don't. Uh, so we'll speak to Walters, this woman here. Hi, how's it going? Like your armor, and she'll tell us what to do next. Sergeant, there are more centaurs on the other side of town. Captain Thackeray's calling for reinforcements at the garrison. If he's calling for help, it must be serious. But I can't spare anyone. I'll go. Captain Thackeray's never failed Divinity's reach. If I can help him, I will. Balthazar, bless you. That's the spirit that'll win this war. Good luck. Oh, so that's the dialogues, the infamous dialogue. I don't actually like the way that those happen quite a lot, but get used to it because that's how a lot of the story is going to be told to you through those kind of quite rigid animation things. You can speak to her again after the cutscene's over. She'll just say, what do you need? And we can say, which way's the garrison? It's east of here. Go on the road outside the inn, then turn right. Uh, quite nice to have directions. You never really need directions in this game, though. You do get a little... Um, green star on your map which you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner and that will guide you pretty much anywhere you want to go so there's a the garrison it's just down this road uh, if you do try and run too far away i may as well demonstrate this a lot of people probably know all this kind of stuff as it is but um, when you're in these instances most of your personal story are going to take place in little chunks of the world that are kind of separate from everything else if you try and run away it will say you're leaving and you'll be teleported back so um, you're always kind of kept in bounds as it were a lot of people don't like invisible walls you'll probably find a fair few of them in the personal story because you're only supposed to be in a small section uh, but most of the world is in general open to you um, and we'll talk about that obviously as we get outside this tutorial which should be quite fun um, so yeah, uh, we'll be able to come back out here later after this is over, the storms will be gone. All of this kind of place, this is our only real chance to see everything overrun, as it were. Uh, these centaurs, once we fight them out of this place, they'll never really come back, so... Um, it's kind of weird, actually, for me, because I've spent so long running around these places on a character that's obviously left his personal story tutorial for a long time ago. It, it's kind of weird. Uh, I may as well talk a little bit about combat. Combat in this game, I actually think, is the number one thing that redeems it from anything else anyone might ever complain about. It is very fluid, it's very fun, certainly for MMOs, uh, it's very, very engaging. Um, and it's got a limited skill bar system, as you can see here. Basically, we get 10 skills. You don't have a million skills that you need to keep track of. There's also not a million redundant skills in the game that don't ever do anything. Uh, we've got some centaurs running away down there. Um, and in general, you can move while doing most things. It's just very fun. As a ranger, we're going to be able to have our pet do all kinds of different things, which should be cool. Um, and also the questing in this game. I feel like a PR guy. I'm seeing so much stuff that uh, <laughs> ArenaNet themselves say. The questing is very different as well. Um, it's very in your face. There's not, oh, you've got a shopping list that you need to give to certain people. This garrison, for example, here, we are actually going to save. I've kind of come in at the end of this event. There is a situation where you can run in and this door will be shut and you won't be able to get inside the garrison until everyone inside's already finished fighting. Um, but at the moment, we're trying to defend the garrison against a, a whole ton of centaurs that are running in. Uh, not too many other players around. When the game first came out, it was just it was packed. It was ridiculous. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of centaurs. Because that's another thing about this game. Uh, as more players are in the area, you, you never have to share loot or anything with other people. And as more people come into a certain area, um, the events and the quests, as it were, will scale up to accommodate for how many players are here. So as more players arrive, more centaurs will also arrive. Which should, in theory, mean that it's always kind of engaging and kind of fun because... That people aren't going to be stealing your kills or whatever. Um, they do only scale to a certain point though, and sometimes in some of the late game.
game areas, uh, you literally as Urgov people will just overrun any enemies that the game can possibly throw at you. So there you go, the gate's behind. If we'd got here a little bit later, I'd be stuck on the other side of that gate, and I'd be fighting stuff back there, as it were. Um, but we get a, a big champion uh, high sage run in. We'll learn a lot about this guy uh, and what he's about to do as we go forward in the game. I got a little reward for helping out here, as you saw in the top right hand corner there. Um, and he'll run away. He's actually invincible at the moment while he's running away. So we can throw our axes and stuff at him, but it won't do anything. Um, that's what we're wielding at the moment, by the way. By default, rangers, uh, they get axes to throw. But instead of like hitting them up front, they are still using them at range, which is quite cool. Anyway, this guy um, summons this. <laughs> These are the hands of... Vulgoth, I believe it is, which is uh, essentially what the centaurs have decided is their god in Guild Wars 2, which is quite interesting. Uh, but this is, at the moment, we're just under the generic name of the Earth Elemental. Uh, but we'll fight more of these as we go forward in the game. Well, actually, there's one particular place where you'll fight a lot of them. There's this guy here that you might have noticed, this person called Logan Thackeray. Um, he's been fighting alongside us. We can speak to him, not in combat, sadly. Yeah, we can. He says, what's your name, citizen? We say, Natalie Pinecove. He says, get ready, smash that thing before it devastates our forces. This fight is going to end very quickly, but it's a little bit more complicated than you might think. You need to take out both hands. If you're ever getting low, the idea is you can come and stand next to Logan here, who's going to be a character we get to know quite well so uh, enjoy him um, and basically he while you're stood next to him he'll give you lots of buffs and stuff that protect you as you can see here I've gotten some nice buffs uh, he'll summon adds and stuff that you can kill but in general he dies very quickly because it is the start of the game and it knocks us the hell out So yeah, that's the end of the personal story um, tutorial for the human. You get knocked out, you go unconscious, you don't know what's going on. And uh, it kind of kicks you into the real world. The real MMO world. So uh, you start off with this little cutscene here. Where am I? What happened? You were injured when the elemental exploded. Captain Thackeray brought you here personally. You've been unconscious for three days. You had lots of visitors. Villagers you rescued, some seraph. Even a noble from the city. He came by several times. That'd be Lord Farron. He's a good friend. I'll check in with him once I'm fully recovered. What should I do now? Fresh air and exercise are the best medicine. The goddess Duena helped you. Perhaps you could help others? Thanks, I will. And thanks for taking such good care of me. Bless you. You'll find plenty to do out in the valley. May Duena protect you. <laughs> this NPC is so weird to talk to, right? Because, uh, let, let me gather my rewards first. So for completing the parts of your personal story, you will get rewards. You get a decision. In the first game, you never got decisions, but you do now. I love this. So I get to choose. Do I want another axe or do I want a warhorn? Let's go with warhorn because those skills are quite fun. And we can equip that in our offhand and we'll actually unlock two more skills there. I'll talk about that more probably next video. But <laughs> this woman here is, she's had so many redesigns with the way she looks. And now she's just like a completely different looking woman with half her rack out. I don't even know whether you can get this armor in the game, but... I don't know, it looks pretty good. So, yeah, you can speak back to her. She says, forgive me, I must attend to the wounded. She never will. Uh, may Duena hasten your convalescence. Convalescence, sorry. Uh, and in this little hut here, it's a bit crowded when the game launched because it was just full of people. But you can actually speak to the wounded soldiers around here. Uh, my patrol was the first to respond when the centaurs showed up. I'm the only one still alive. All my friends are gone. I don't know what I'm going to do. So, a bit of a horrible lost soldier here. Uh, we get three different decisions of how we reply to him. This is playing into that decision we made at the start of the game. It doesn't really do much, to tell you the truth, but uh, we did say we would speak with dignity most of the time, so if you just usually choose this icon, you'll be okay. Uh, Honour their memory, fight as they fought bravely. Uh, you're right, you're right, I won't let them down. The second I can, I'm returning to active duty. That's the spirit. Get back out there. So yeah, you can speak to a lot of these guys and uh, kind of refine these decisions. Uh, gods, everything aches. If I get out of here, I swear I'll kill every centaur I see. Hang in there, soldier. Um, the game will give you lots of hints as you, as you start a new character and so forth, which is fine. Um, you got a guy here as well, a priest of Duena. Uh, Duena, bless you, kind soul. Uh, what may I do for you today? What is this place? Well, this was Miller Scott's house, but he was lost in the attack and willed his dwelling to the followers of Duena. We have set it up as an infirmary for now and we hope to make it a permanent hospital. Do all clergy of Duena practice medicine? Yes, medical training is a part of our calling. As Duena is the goddess of healing, so does she call us to cure. I thank the goddess every day for allowing me to help the people of Shamor. So you can ask, what is this place again? And he'll kind of repeat himself. The 
dialogue is a little bit weird in this game because you often do get the same response without even realising you've asked the same question. Uh, what made you decide to become a priestess of Duena? When I was young, I saw Duena's blessings help my sister to overcome a grave illness. I wish to do my part to save lives and to heal what had been injured. I felt this was the best way. Are there any priests and priestesses of other deities around? The Elvin Monastery is to followers of Cormir, while I believe a priestess of Balthazar is in the Lost Haven. Devotees of Melandria and Lissa are likely somewhere in the wilderness. So, um, basically what he's talking about here are the gods. We can also ask about Grenth, which is another god he hasn't mentioned. Ah, uh, oh, of course, he says. I believe there is a priest near Shamor's graveyard. I've seen him depart towards Divinity's Reach come nightfall. So, it's likely he can be found thereabouts during the day. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned before, the, the humans have got lots of different gods, they've got six gods, uh, and all around the starting area of the game, so if this is our map, all around this massive chunk of the world here, we'll find all of these different priests, and you can go and speak to all of them. I quite like it that this Duena guy, so the first people you meet are, are the priestesses and priests of Duena, um, and they don't really like Grenth, which is quite funny because in Guild Wars 1, or at least he forgets about Grenth, which is quite funny because, as I said, in Guild Wars 1, uh, they didn't seem to get on very well which is very interesting considering a big spoiler to do with those gods later on in, in the story, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, uh, basically we're meeting these priests. These are, They've kind of set up a ramshack infirmary. We can leave hey, and... Over here. If you want to know what's going on in the valley, come talk to me. That guy will introduce himself to us, but this is the world. This is, for me, this was my first ever view of the world kind of thing. Um, back during betas, demos, conventions, stuff like that, this was the first thing you got to see. And it really is as expansive as it looks. You can go pretty much everywhere I'm looking at right now, uh, which is very fun. And hopefully exploring this will be something cool we get to do in the Let's Play. Um, a lot of it will be personal story, but we will be exploring a hell of a lot of the world as well. As I zoom out, and I zoom out... And I zoom out. This is the world that they've crafted. There is a hell of a lot to do here. Not all of this is accessible at the game's launch. Um, but I'm sure this channel will take you through everywhere they ever do ads. So, so yeah, this is kind of what the LP is going to be about. We can speak to this guy to see what our next task is as we really get into the meat of things here. His bread basket. Since the centaur attack, citizens are trying to rebuild their lives. But it's tough with bandits and dangerous wildlife roaming the area. Don't wait for an invitation. Jump in and help them. So that is the heart quest system, which I'll give you a very brief overview of next video. Uh, there will be a lot of this kind of basic bollocks, to be perfectly honest, in these first couple of videos, just so that I can get everything on par. This if you do know about it, yeah, 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 I already know all that. Um, if you do know already all of that stuff, I will try to keep it uh, quite short so we can get into the more meaty stuff you probably don't know about. Uh, but yeah, so there you go, guys. This is kind of the start to Let's Play Guild Wars 2. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, we will be seeing an awful lot, lots more to come, maybe even another video today. Thanks again and hopefully this is the start of something pretty good. I definitely enjoyed Guild Wars 1. Let's hope we enjoy Guild Wars 2. I'll see you next time, and name my pet as well. Uh, I Literally, I'll, I read all comments, so just seriously, whatever names come up, whatever I, I like the, the, the sound of, we'll go with. So oh, He's so cool. Look at his face. He looks kind of old, actually. Brilliant.